Learning Adobe Illustrator can seem like a daunting task, but in this series called Illustrator Basics, I'll break it down for you into short and simple to understand blocks. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the stroke palette. So to start with, you'll need a path. You'll need to make sure that there is a stroke color applied to that path. So in your color palette, make sure that there is something applied to your stroke and you don't necessarily need something applied to your fill. Then you're going to want to pop open the stroke palette which can be found down here in the Essentials Classic workspace. If you're having trouble locating your stroke palette, you can find it by going window and then navigating down to stroke and making sure that it's turned on. The basic stroke palette is literally just the stroke weight. You can use the up and down arrow here to increase or decrease the size of the stroke. You can use this drop down to select common intervals of strokes or you can select this and enter in a numerical value to define your own stroke weight. By default, points will probably be your unit for the stroke palette. You can adjust this by going to Illustrator, Preferences, Units, and defining a new unit for your stroke size in here. So it might be useful to use inches, millimeters, or centimeters if you're looking for a specific thickness of stroke in a more technical drawing. But for most, the default unit of points should be fine. Now, the basic stroke palette just has the weight that I mentioned here, but there's a whole bunch of options up here in the top right corner if you go show options. And now you get a number of variables in here, which I'm gonna to start to go through. The default stroke ends with a basic butt cap. You can choose to use a round cap, and it, it's a subtle difference, but a round cap will give you a much different ending to a stroke than this abrupt butt cap does. The third type of cap is called a projecting cap. And literally in my 15 years of using Illustrator, I have never used a projecting cap. But you'll see what happens here. The actual path ends and a cap projects out past the end of the stroke. I don't really know why that's useful, but knowing what's going on might help you troubleshoot a document where there's a projecting cap and you don't understand why the line is extending past where your path is supposed to be ending. The next set of options in your stroke palette refer to corners. Now, straight paths obviously don't have corners, so to demonstrate this, I'm going to use these rectangles, but you're also going to find corners on open paths, so just good to know. The default corner is called a miter join. Again, like the round cap, a round join is just going to soften the edges and give you a slightly different look versus the really sharp miter join. Another type of corner that you could select is a bevel join. And again, this is not an option that I've ever used, but handy to know what's going on there. Okay, one other note about a miter corner. So here we have a miter corner. You may find in a situation where the angle becomes quite extreme, a miter corner might break. You can adjust this by increasing the limit. So in this case, you will need to go to a much larger number and having a larger number is going to allow this miter corner to extend out further. So if you're finding that your corners are breaking, it might be because the limit of your miter is too small. Another powerful feature inside the stroke palette is the dashed line option. So on this rectangle, I'm gonna turn on a dashed line. And to start with, it's just a basic 10 point dash. The gap matches the first size if you don't enter in a value. But of course, you can modify this if you'd like and give yourself a larger gap than a dash. You can create a pattern where your next dash is small and your next gap is bigger. So you can create pattern lines by using alternating dash lines in here. If we go back to the default, I'm gonna show you another way that I use dash lines. So if you enter in a zero point dash and define a gap of say 20, 
and then combine that with a round cap, you actually create dots. Because the dashes are zero points, the end caps extend from those zero point coordinates, and you end up with a set of dots around a line like this. There's an option here on your dash line to adjust where the dashes sit, and this option will come in handy. Align dashes to corners and path ends. So in this case, it forces a dot onto each of our corners on this path. It means that some of these values might be adjusted. You may not have an exact 20 point gap because it's forcing the points to start in the corners. Another way that I'll use the dash line is in a situation like this. I'll turn on the dash line. I'll give the dash a value. And then I'm going to increase the stroke weight until the dashes intersect with other lines that I set up on the outer border. Now, this is a handy trick to use because now you can adjust the number of these divisions inside of your design by increasing or decreasing the gap. So we can go and increase the gap and reduce the number of lines or vice versa, decrease that gap and get this really cool radial design just with the use of a dashed line. The next set of options which are quite handy are arrowheads. There's a number of defined arrowheads in here from quite simple to a little bit more stylized. Once you've defined an arrowhead, you can adjust the scale of it. You can make it larger or smaller with the scale value. You can flip whether it's on the left or right side of a path. You can also change the alignment, whether the arrow aligns to directly to the end point of a path or extends out past it. And then finally, there's the stroke profile. So by default, you'll be set up with a uniform profile, which is just one consistent stroke weight. But there's some interesting profiles here that are going to appear almost as if they're drawn with pen and ink or a brush stroke. And these can be handy for inking artwork. You get a bunch of different width profiles built in, which you can increase or decrease in size and weight. And you can also flip across your path from left to right. So you can change the direction of where these profiles are starting from and ending. So that's it, the stroke palette. It sounds simple, but there's a number of very powerful features, very powerful options in here, and knowing how to use all of them can come in handy in your design workflow. So that's the end of the video for today. I'd really appreciate it if you'd go leave a comment down below about what you thought. If you liked the video, giving it a thumbs up would be an awesome way to show your support. And if you've liked what you've seen from me, please go check out the other videos that I've got posted on my channel and consider subscribing if you haven't already.